Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another segment of Coffee and Connections with the Chief. I'm Chief Dean Rondeau with the Wolfboro Police Department, and to my left is Captain Mark Livy, my able-bodied executive officer. I can't believe that it's the month of December already. It seems like just yesterday it was April and spring was out, ice was on its way out, and uh, we, were, we were gearing up for another busy summer. Uh, so now it's... Six months away. Yeah, so now it's 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 winter time. <clears throat> it's winter time in Wolfboro, and it's Christmas time in Wolfboro. So Merry Christmas, everybody, and Happy New Year. Uh, I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving, a, a very joyous Thanksgiving. So um, the budget is uh, is is at this point it's essentially completed. We're waiting on a few last minute changes. Uh, and contract signage, but uh, the I think there was an article I saw in the Grand State News says the overall town budget was down 3.5%, uh, which is actually remarkable, uh, especially when the C especially when the CPI index is so high. Um, that's good. My budget, uh, the police department budget, we were only up 2.5% uh, this year. Yeah, and a lot of that was due to just. The inflationary cost of items uh, like like fuel and and uh, some other things that you know we have no control over. Um, so I was very happy with the way the budget turned out this year. It was a, it was a really good budget. Like 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 all years, <clears throat> budgets are, are are fickle, right? They're they're difficult and and it's always a struggle uh, to come up with with a decent budget. And we're always trying to predict the uncertainties that we have. But I think we did a good job this year. Uh, time will tell. Uh, the fiscal year 22 budget is actually looking pretty good. We just finished a budget analysis not too long ago. So I think uh, we're going to be landing the aircraft squarely on the deck once again. Uh, a pretty good budget execution. Uh, we did have a few cost overruns. Fuel, obviously, uh, was a cost overrun. There was nothing I could do about that. Just the, the price of fuel went through the roof, and um, it is what it is. Uh, we managed as best we could. Um, but beyond that, I I, uh, I think the budget went the budget execution this year went fairly well, so I was really happy about that. Uh, public safety building is moving along <coughs> at light speed, um, so hopefully we'll be uh, you know look for the Warren article on the public safety building. Uh, I think it's uh, it's well thought out. Uh, you know we've been at this now for what the better part of five years. And this is well thought out, so there's a lot of hard work went into this. My hat goes off to the town manager and, and to uh, the fire chief, uh, obviously to my staff and Captain Mark Livy for their diligent work on crafting uh, a building which will last well into the next 50 years. Uh, importantly, uh, it looks like we're going to be putting that building on the uh, on the existing site where we're at right now. We heard the citizens loud and clear. They they want us to stay there. I got it. We listened. Um, so uh, more to follow on that, but stay tuned. Right? Um, you know that's the way it's looking right now. Uh, of course, things can change, but but uh, you don't know you don't know what you don't know, and you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So uh, more to follow on that. <clears throat> The uh, so one of the interesting things here, and I was talking to the to the gentleman that you can't see that they're leaving right now. I was spending a few minutes with them, and they were talking about and something I want to mention. Uh, the animals are moving about right now. It's it's early in December. Uh, they're bulking up for the winter. Um, so yes, the deer and and the porcupines and and uh, the raccoons and of course the bears are going to be rummaging through looking for food, right? They're looking to bulk up. Now, now black bears in New Hampshire are, are fairly docile, all right? But they are omnivores, right? Bears are omnivores. What does that mean? That means they eat anything, all right? Yes, they will eat meat. Yes, they will eat, uh, you know, the carcasses of dead uh, animals that they trip across in the forest. They'll eat vegetables. They'll eat greenery. They'll eat all sorts of stuff. If you have a compost pile or if you're putting your trash out, in, in unprotected receptacles, yes, the bears will smell that and the bears will get into that. Other critters may get into it as well. So, uh, word to the wise, you know, uh, if you can secure your garbage, at least for, the, for, for, for now, 
inside the house or in a garage or your shed. Take it to the dump immediately. As soon as the dump opens, get rid of it just for the next few weeks uh, until the bears, uh, until it gets cold enough where the bears start to, to hunker down for the winter and go into hibernation. Uh, if you have a compost pile, yes, that will attract wild animals, right? I mean, you've got uh, food and refuse uh, from, from the dinner table going in there. Yes, that is going to attract bears. All right, so just just be mindful that if you take away the food source, right, they're, 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 they'll wander off. They'll go somewhere else. So if, if you've got food, you're going to be attracting animals. So just be mindful of that, right, uh, and, and keep that in mind. So uh, we don't we don't want to have to put down bears, right? That we have very few options. Well, we do have a brand new municipal conservation officer, and she would tell you the same thing. You know, don't feed the bears. Well, I'm not feeding the bears. Yeah, you're putting your garbage out and you're putting your compost out. Stop doing that. All right, and the bears will go away. All right, they'll find another source of food somewhere else. You know, they'll they'll look for a blueberry bush or. Or, or something else to eat, uh, but no, they won't be eating out of compost. So you, you just have to do it for a few weeks, and then they'll they'll go away. All right. So no, they're not rabid. They're not rabid raccoons. They're not rabid bears. No, they're just hungry. They're bulking up for the winter. Raccoons do the same thing. They're going to bulk up for the winter before they go find a hollow of a tree and and snuggle down for the winter. Okay. So uh, just just be mindful uh, of what you're doing and how you're doing it. Okay. Uh, lastly, of course, you know, winter storms, right? And need I say more? Slow down. If you don't have to go to an appointment and you know you got a nor'easter coming in, cancel the appointment, make it for another day, don't get out on the road. The other day in November, the first snow, the first appreciable snowfall we had, we had six motor vehicle crashes all right in a row. It was like everybody forgot how to drive in the snow up here, okay? Most of our crashes occur during periods of inclement weather, right? There is no mystery. So please, if you don't need to go out, don't go out. The roads do get bad, all right? You know, here in New Hampshire, we laid the roads out the way the cows walked, all right? So yes, they're tortuous, right? They're twisty, turny. You put a little snow and ice on there, you can't drive like it's the middle of July, all right? So keep that in the back of your mind when, when you're out and about, all right? Um, beyond that, um, everything is going well uh, operationally. The PD is, is, is moving in the right direction. Um, I'm going to turn it over now to the captain for an operational update. Captain. Thanks, Chief. So before I get into the operational, so I just want to touch base on we do have two warrant articles that are going to come out. Um, one is our usual one with a cruiser. Um, we're looking at another hybrid Explorer interceptor. Um, the price has gone up, so you will notice that. That's just price of cars. They all have gone up. Um, there is an incredible increase on that compared to the years past, so that's where the added money is on that Warren article. But same car, nothing new. All the upfitting equipment is the same. Um, we're almost getting to the point where we can actually transfer a lot of our stuff, but we still have some uh, Tauruses that do not transfer over and some equipment that do not to just... They just can't manage it in it. We're, we're, fa we're phasing, phasing out. Up. We're phasing yeah. out the Ford Tauruses. Yeah. So they're going out of the inventory, and we're we're replacing them with the with the uh, Ford Explorer interceptors. Yep. And then look, every five years they do some changes to those vehicles, so some equipment might not transfer over. When we've had them, we try to keep cruisers for ten years. That's the main goal, um, and they'll have about. 140 to 160 um, mileage and idling mileage is that that's beyond that so uh, we do get our use out of these vehicles and that's the goal that we tried to do we try for 10 years it all depends on the salt it all depends on the wear and tear and um, we do our best um, on trying to manage that and the mileage and to keep it down for the shifts so we do have just so everybody knows we do have 11 cruisers on our st on our fleet um, remember there's a lot of officers that go to training. There's a lot of officers that go to, um, what other things do they actually go to? training. Uh, so, yeah, so we have 11 vehicles in the fleet. Officers are on duty. Um, there are some specialized cruisers. The detective has one. The K-9 officer has one. Uh, the captain has one. He has probably the most special vehicle in the fleet. He's got the Tesla. 
Uh, and uh, officers are in court. They're making runs, uh, they're taking evidence down to Concord. They're they're doing follow up on investigation, so forth and so on. So the cruisers are generally uh, out and about uh, in town doing doing police work. We do not, uh, with the exception of of uh, a few officers in the department. Uh, the we do not have take-home cruises for the patrol officers, right? Though they do not take those cruises home, they stay uh, at the station for the next shift. Okay. Uh, the reason we try to keep the cruises for ten years is is, is depreciation, right? We're trying to buy back, if you will, that depreciate depreciation cost. So what what does that mean? That means that the minute you drive a vehicle off a fleet uh, off a correction off the lot after you buy it, automatically depreciates thirty percent. The only way to recoup that depreciation cost is is over time. Uh, Ten years is about the break-even point. You get 11 years, and sometimes we get 11 years out of a cruiser. You're actually uh, you're actually ahead of the ball, uh, the ballpark, right? You've 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 gained money back. Interestingly enough, this year, and I did the asset management plan as part of our budget, so we have a very detailed asset management plan at the Wolpro PD. And this year, interestingly enough. Several of our vehicles, several of our police interceptors increased in value, right? Which is a good thing. So what? what and the reason for that is because the the automobile market turned upside down. So it, the used vehicles were actually uh, of greater value, and and uh, the newer vehicles are actually uh, lower. If if that makes any sense. So some of our, our police interceptors, uh, the one that the uh, lieutenant drives and, and a couple of others, actually increased in value because they were reasonably low mileage, because they were all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive vehicles, because of the particular model that we used. We actually gained uh, some, some money in, in uh, d- depreciation, so, which, which is a really good thing. It was really, and it's the first time I've seen that in... 20 almost 27 years of law enforcement that's the first time i've seen something like that happen so it it just speaks to how crazy this past year has been with with everything that's been going on but yeah so we're we're, again we're doing really well and we 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 have a very talented uh uh, public works maintenance section that maintains our cruisers so yes even though that some of them are getting a little uh, along in years, right, getting a little long in the tooth, so to speak, they're maintained very well, in fact, impeccably well. And we have a very talented uh, crew. We, we have Ben uh, down there does, uh, who, who leads that uh, maintenance effort down at the Public Works, and he does a fantastic job on our vehicles. Our vehicles are very safe. Um, the problem that we generally see, especially with the Ford Tauruses, is just a poor quality metal uh, steel was used in the construction and we're starting to see rust issues on these vehicles we're trying to remediate that but we're starting to see rust issues in these vehicles a couple of years before we we expected to see those types of issues so uh those vehicles need to be rotated out of the inventory back to the captain yeah so what we do is we we put an under um coating on the underneath of the vehicles which a lot, a lot of people do around here due to the fact of the salt and everything and and during the winter months we um we contract with the local car wash too and we go through that and where everything gets drained and the salt gets drained within the um the drainage which is in there so it keeps the environment up at the public safety building and all the drainage That's right. yeah. in a good spot so i know that was a concern for a lot of people and they didn't understand what we did in the winter time and that's what we really do because you can't really start washing your cars when it's negative 30 degrees outside because everything everything freezes pretty quickly. So, um, so other than that, in the public safety building. Now, if anyone wants to come into our current safety building, I mean, we do have a YouTube that's out there on the community TV that gives a tour of the inside of our building. But if you want to see it... Um, Schedule. Uh, give me a call. Uh, give me an email. Uh, stop by, and um, I'll be happy enough to walk you through our side, and I'll get somebody for the fire uh, to walk you through theirs, or I'll I'll take you over there, and uh, give you the best um, little open house I can do for you, I think. But if you want to see the inside, just yeah, give us an email, give us a call, and I'll be happy enough to walk you through our our side of the building. Um, then you can see what the inside looks like and. Um, what we've done with closet spaces and the, and the use in there. So we've really 
um, use that building yeah, to, to the fullest. fullest. I mean, really, um, it's done a great job. It's exceeded uh, really the the use of the building. So it's done a it's done a wonderful job. And it's in if you look at it, it's still going to somewhat be there. It's just going to be renovated some of it and added to a, um, to the back. That's what we're looking at right now. So with the operation, um, as we all know, we're one um, higher, so we, I have it um, on December 3rd, we have a agility test. And right now we're about 19, 20 uh, candidates looking for a position. So that's pretty exciting to us at this time. Um, it's a good sign. Yeah, it's a really good sign. It looks like things are flipping out. I mean, I remember when we went and went for a, a job opening, I mean, you're competing against hundreds of people for one job, one opening, really. And now, so we're, we're building it up. I think last time we may have had like seven or eight, and now we're up to 20. Um, that, that's a good increase. That, that, that's a good sign. Um, people are still coming back and still want to do this job, which is a great job and a great profession. Um, so we have that uh, coming there. Then the oral boards will be after that, which is a process. And um, hopefully that new hire will be sometime the end of December, beginning of January. And in the academy, we're just waiting for the next academy to see when that's going to be. We're hoping sometime in March. Uh, that will give us enough time because we have to do a background on um, the individual, which is just a common procedure that we all do and everybody goes through um, when we get hired. So um, January 8th is the next academy, which Officer Dustin goes to. Um, he'll be gone for 16 weeks, so we wish him well on that. I mean, it's a long 16 weeks when you're in there, but once you're out of there, it's actually pretty quick. <laughs> But you can't say that until you actually get out. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we lo we'll lose him for 16 weeks in the uh, patrol division. But um, he'll be back sometime. I think it's in April. Uh, you'll see him back in the streets again. So that's exciting. Um, with everything else in operation, our radar trailer, our signs, you, you won't see them anymore. It's wintertime. We don't want them to get ruined. We put them in and storage until probably the end of April again. So Sergeant Bulio takes care of that. He took care of all that, put it all inside. So that's, that's a great, um, so we'll wait till next year until those come back out. And if you need something in the meantime, just get a hold of Sergeant Bulio with that and he'll get you on the list for next year on a position of the radar trailers. Um, anything else with community service uh, that you need? Um, any parades, any other incidents, you want to get a hold of Sergeant Spera. He takes care of all the services. He's the service department, and uh, he'll help you with anything that you need from us, and we'll be happy enough to do anything, really, um, which I think is a great community relations that we have and uh, PR that we do with many things. I think our last one that we did was the Halloween um, up at Crescent Lake which went wonderful. Uh, I think we talked about that last time. So that was great. Um, other than that, I think the officers, I think, um, are doing well. They're out in the road. You'll see them out there. Our case, our case is last month, as he briefed it in the commissioners meeting, I think it was one of our highest incidents of the year. Um, I think we had 78 incidents, which is, which is a lot. I mean, that's incidents. That doesn't mean how many actual crimes that we had, offenses we had during those, 96. So, um, so that's a lot. Uh, that's a lot of cases. Um, I think right now, I think we briefed it in the commissioner's meeting that the SRO, Officer Devine, is over, overwhelmed. Um, she's right now at 100, well, actually when we briefed this last month, which remember is a month prior, she was up to 105 cases. Which, which is amazing. That's a, that's a lot of cases to um, investigate. And we have Corporal Boucher, who's up there too, part-time. Remember, he's probably got about 20 to 25 cases on top of that 105 that Officer Devine does because to help out um, with the school, because it's, it's a very large school. And, and last year, last year, I think he, he handled 46 cases. Uh, so again, that's for a part-time officer, that's a lot of cases. Uh, 46, I remember when 46 used to be what we would handle in the, in the course of a year. So, um, yeah. 
So I, that's, one, uh, that's another Warren article that's going to come in um, for an SRO, school resource officer, additional. So what does that mean? Um, so you, we have one, Officer Devine, as I just said, she's overwhelmed. Um, I said she's about 105, but that was in October. So we're probably looking at, right now, in the ballpark, 130, 135 cases she has, which is a lot. I mean, that's to do, remember, I mean, that school, just the main campus of that school, the middle school, you have the high school, and you have the vocational school. That's a large... Crescent Lake School. Yeah, well, yeah, Crescent Lake, too, and, and the back campus, and you have Carpenter School. Don't worry. I mean, we, we're over there as much as, as we can, as you see Corporal Boucher over there. So what that other school resource officer will be doing is assisting Officer Devine and positioning that, that individual, uh, he or she, in the middle school. Uh, that's the goal. So they will have somebody in the middle school, we'll have somebody in the high school, and for us, for our Crescent Lake and the Carpenter School, um, Corporal Boucher will really go back and forth in those positions and assist when somebody's in training or on vacation with the other two. So we'll always have, the goal is to always have two school resources offices on campus. Um, that's, I mean, it's, it's a large campus. Remember, there's seven towns that go to that school. So it's a very large campus. There's a lot of um, staff, faculty, and um, children within that campus. Yeah, it's over uh, 2,000 students, faculty, and staff on that campus at any one point in time while school is in session now. And another thing on this uh, school resource officer, this is a, uh, if you will, a partnership that's being entered into uh, between SAU 49 and the uh, town of Wolfboro, Wolfboro Police Department, right? So SAU 49 does contribute to the funding of that position. Uh, it, it's, it, it's not quite a 50-50 split because they're, they're paying for the officer's services when school is in session, when the officer is physically there. Uh, so, but it's, it's close, it's close to a 50-50. Uh, there's a Warren article, um, you'll see it, I, I please support it. The safety of the school children is of paramount importance, right? Uh, with this plan that we have right now, uh, to have two full-time officers and a part-time officer gives me a team of three up at that very busy SAU 49 complex, right? So again, it's the SAU 49, so SAU 49 is contributing uh, significantly to the funding of that officer position. Um, and this gives me a team of three up there to deal with any crises that, that come our way, all right? It gives Officer Devine some additional resources so she can uh, start to investigate and handle the cases that she's being overwhelmed with right now. But it really shores up the safety of that complex. That's, that's, that's important, that's a very, very important complex we need to make sure it's safe we need to make sure that we have the right resources up there to deal with the issues that we're dealing with this this plan will do it and it's very cost effective because it's a partnership and it's a shared cost between sau 49 and and the town of wolfboro so that's really the most important piece to this so again two warrant articles for the police department the cruiser, which we de we definitely need, and and the uh, the second full time school resource officer, shared cost between Wolfboro PD, Town of Wolfboro, and SAU 49. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Chief. And um, so, anything else with the police side? I think we're moving along very well um, with dispatch. Uh, we're always looking for part timers. Um, send your resume, cover letter to Supervisor Mia Lyons. Um, her email is on the website. Um, I believe it's on Facebook too. So if you need anything there, just contact her or just give me a call and I'll guide you in the right direction where to go. Um, so that's, other than that, we're, we're, we're looking pretty good with um, dispatch. Uh, no new things happening in there. Um, other than that, I can't think of anything else. What, I mean, our goal, once we finalize this building, I'll be happy enough to get it on our Facebook page so everybody can see it. Um, we're just we're doing the final little touches on it, and I believe it will be out in maybe December's uh, selections meeting somewhere down there for a price because we're getting close. I mean, uh, Feb I mean really February has to be finalized with all warrant articles, and um, 
in March is the voting, so it's coming around the corner. I mean, look, we're already in December, which is amazing. Uh, it feels every time we sit here, it's, time just goes by real fast. So um, other than that, I'll give it back to the chief. Well, that uh, concludes <coughs> our Coffee and Connections with the Chief. Again, as always, uh, you know, pay attention to the weather uh, and um, make sure you get out early uh, and do your Christmas shopping, right? That's really important. If you're like me, you let the wife do it all for the family and then you just get something for the wife or the significant other, all right? That's, you know, my patented approach to Christmas. Uh, but folks, listen, have a very Merry Christmas, very happy uh, New Year. And we will see you again. Actually, one more thing. So with New Year's Eve, remember this. So last night, um, not just last night, I know this is a great time for everyone to get back from college, um, everybody to go out, have a great some parties. If you're going to drink, please don't drive. Just please don't drive. Have somebody set up, have somebody be that designated driver, have somebody come and pick you up. Um, last resort, give the PD a call, we'll figure out something and get you home. Please do not drive, all right? Yeah, I call, uh, I call New Year's Eve amateur night, by the way, amateur night. Now, there's a reason for that. All right, listen, um, thank you for tuning in. Tune in again next month for another segment of Coffee and Connections with the Chief. And as always, stay safe out there, and I will see you again next year. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Coffee and Connections with the Chief. I'm here with Jim. You remember Jim? Uh, Kadarsha from uh, a few months back, and uh, Jim is uh, so he's a, he's a repeat uh, guest on the show. I, I guess he, he's a glutton for punishment. Jim, welcome back. How are you? Um, very well, thank you. Great to be here. So uh, we were just talking a little bit about wild animals. Wild animals. And um, the challenges uh, uh, and strategies of how a police department uh, deals with calls for uh, bears or raccoons or, or whatever people run into. Bats in the belfry. Bats, bats, yeah, that's a different one. But uh, the advice I once received was uh, in response to my question about uh, I'm out in the woods w uh, in Tufton Borough, Wolfboro, with the dog and I run into a black bear. And uh, the advice I received was um, first question, uh, is the dog on a leash? And uh, then uh, I said, um, usually the dog is on a leash. And then they said, uh, second question, do you see any cubs? And I said, maybe. And uh, the advice there was um, just don't get in between them. Yep, leave the cubs alone. Uh, if the mother can't see the cubs and it's because of you, you have a problem. Yep. Otherwise, just stand there and watch, and they usually go away pretty quickly. Yep. So uh, what do you say when people call you up and say, I got a bear in my backyard? Yeah, I say don't do anything. In fact, uh, right, right before uh, Jim came on the show, I was talking to uh, some of my uh, friends that were here. Uh, and, uh, of course, you know, no, they didn't invite me for breakfast. Uh, but one of them was, was asking that very question. Hey, you know, I, I got a, a bear wandered into my dumpster, and, you know, and, and he's, you know, you know, what do I do? And I said, don't do anything. Uh, the bear will wander out of your dumpster once he eats everything that's in there or he figures out that there's no food in there. So, so right now... This is a great question. Right now, all the animals are on the move, right? Your, you know, your dare, your moose, your bear, raccoons, porcupines. So the other night, for example, uh, I'm out uh, in, and I'm out uh, having a fire in my fire pit, and it's late at night, and uh, I'm walking back to, uh, to go in because it's getting cold outside, and I almost stepped on a porcupine, right? Literally just, just enjoying the fire, just like me, right? trying to stay warm and uh so i say hey shoot get out of here what are you doing here you know you can't be doing that i don't want to step on you they're they're moving around they're they're bulking up for the winter right and the bears and the raccoons and and the porcupines and and all the woodland animals right the moose the deer right they're all bulking up for the winter because you know we got a bad winter coming in and every winter is bad. We've got a bad winter coming in, and they're, you know, the bears and raccoons and so forth are going to go into hibernation, and, and they're going to find a, a nice hollow of a tree somewhere and, and, and dig in and hunker down and, and wait out the winter. And so they're trying to put on, on fat. Just because you have a slow-moving porcupine or raccoon or even a bear nudging around your compost pile or your, your garbage cans or whatever doesn't mean it's rabbit. It's not rabbit. Um, 
it's slow, it's moving around. Yeah, it's lethargic, it's tired, it's hungry. It's, it's probably all of the above, okay? And uh, it'll go away, it'll wander away. It's a wild animal, right? They have survival instincts, they're gonna wander away. No, we don't wanna have to shoot it uh, if we don't have to, right? I mean, we don't have a whole lot of options, uh, but they will wander away. So here's something else, change your habits. If you've got raccoons, if you've got bear, right, what are you doing that's attracting them to your yard? You, you're putting out compost? Uh, did you, did you, you, know, you know, dump some grease from, from the turkey dinner last night? Did you, uh, you know, have some garbage uh, that's maybe unsecured or not tied down or you don't have a lid on it or whatever the case may be? That's what the bear or the animals smell, right? They, 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 they smell that, they're hungry. Remember, animals have a sense of smell uh, oftentimes greater than that of a human, okay? They're hungry, they're bulking up for the winter. So take away the food source, they'll wander away, all right? Uh, if the bear wanders into your dumpster, it'll wander out, all right? If it, for some reason, can't get out, okay, give us a call and we'll call Fish and Game and we'll figure out how to get the bear out of the dumpster. But in the meantime, uh, you know, don't, 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 don't put out your bird feeders. You know, I get, we get this in the springtime. Oh, well, I got a bear in my yard, it's knocking over my bird feeder. Okay, don't put your bird feeder out this early, all right? Wait, wait for a few weeks until, you know, the bears can find something else. Bears are omnivores. Uh, black bears in New Hampshire are omnivores. They'll eat vegetation. They'll eat, they'll eat food, right? So they'll eat, like, meat and garbage and grubs and all sorts of stuff. So same thing with the raccoons, right? So don't put that stuff out too early, and you won't have a problem. Just because they're slow doesn't mean, and lethargic, doesn't mean that they're rabid. It just means they're slow and lethargic. Back to you, Jim. Two questions. Have you ever received a call where, um, and what would you do, uh, or tell the people, if the animal, large animal, entered their home? Oh, yes. And then secondly, um, might be useful, depending on what the answer is, for people to hear. Have you uh, ever heard or know any statistics on actual bear attacks? Do people ever get attacked by bear in this state? Not in this state. Uh, I can't remember the last time we had a bear attack. Two days ago down in, uh... So my captain is off screen here and he's telling me, <laughs> well, chief, two days ago, okay, I stand corrected. <laughs> two days ago where? It was on WMUI the other day. I guess, okay, a couple of days ago, so, so we're probably, it was probably Manchester. Yeah, probably, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, so so the yeah, so the question is, what was the person doing? What was the person doing wrong? Because bears normally don't attack humans, right? Unless it's a were bear. No, they don't exist. I'm just funning. They don't exist. So, um, so very rarely. So let's put it that way. Since I was just corrected. So, but I, in, and I'm going on. This coming June will be 27 years in law enforcement. I cannot recall a time in in the 26 plus years that I've been here that we've had a, a bear attack in this area. Uh, there is one case uh, of a bear that did enter a home. And in, in that particular case, what you do is, you know, get the children, get out the back door, go to a neighbor's house, or grab your cell phone, give us a call. We'll get fishing game over there, and we'll, 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 we'll figure something out on, on how to get the bear out of the house. That did happen. Uh, a few years back, I can't remember if it was in Wolfboro or Tuftonboro, but it was, it, was, it, was, it was a few years, probably a good 15 years ago, uh, but it was in, written up in um, the Grand State News, so if you go online, you might be able to find that, or Google it, you might be able to find uh, that situation. Generally speaking, if you live out in the woods, uh, like we all do, right, um, keep your doors shut. And oh, by the way, when you go to bed at night, keep your doors locked. Lock your doors, right? Don't leave your doors open. All right, don't, don't, you don't want to make yourself a victim. Um, that would be my advice. But yeah, lock your doors. And again, remember, you know, are you, you know, what are you putting in your yard that's attracting the bears, right? Do you have fruit bushes, right? Blueberry, I have blueberry bushes in my yard, right? I, I have a garden, right? So yes, animals will be attracted to, to that kind of stuff. I lost most of my cucumbers this year and all of my peppers to an overly aggressive porcupine. <laughs> So uh, it happens. Well, it sounds like we've got more things to worry about than the wildlife. We do. <laughs> we, we, we do indeed. And, and, uh, th but things are going well. I mean, for Wolf Pro PD, things are going really well. 
and uh, I'm really, really happy with the way things went this year. Now, do you have anybody uh, on your team in particular that deals with wildlife, or do you deal with fish and yes. games? No, great, uh, Greg. Thank you for asking that question. So, so real quick, just let me. I, I'm really, really proud about this. I'm really happy about this. So, a few years ago. Um, we decided that because of the, the types and numbers of animal calls we were getting was tripping across into not just livestock calls, but also wild game call, wild animal calls, uh, in addition to our very busy, you know, domesticated animal calls, that we needed to look at this problem from a different perspective. And what, what, what we did in the Wolfboro Police Department is we created basically a municipal conservation officer position. We reorganized uh, that function where, where in the past it was basically, a, you know, a, if you will, for lack of a better term, a dog catcher, right? It was, a, it was an officer that dealt with, uh, with domesticated animals, so dogs and cats and, and that kind of stuff. And, and that was fine, and that served the town very well. But now we began to deal in, in other animal areas that we weren't necessarily trained or equipped to deal in. But we were getting the calls. Because, because Fish and Game is out looking at poaching or looking at you know, uh, some other type of issue that they, they don't have uh, the resources uh, that were immediately available when the calls were coming in, like the bear in the dumpster or the, the bats in the belfry or the, you know, the raccoons under the, under the porch or, or skunk, skunks wandering around. So we, we, we had to figure something else out. And uh, because, of course, when you have a problem, right, who do you call? You call the PD, right? And you, and, and you don't want to hear, well, sorry, fish and game isn't available right now. You don't want to hear that. If you're a citizen paying taxes, you want immediate response. Okay. So we created this municipal conservation officer. We hired a young lady who has a degree in uh, animal science, a four-year degree in animal science from the University of New Hampshire. She lives in town. She owns a farm. She maintains livestock. She has a specialty in uh, livestock and, and uh, wildlife management. And she was the perfect fit. She was the perfect fit. So we sent her to the Animal Control Academy, got her trained up to be an animal control officer. We're going to be sending her to the police academy to make her a certified police officer. And now we have the best of both worlds. We have somebody that can coordinate with fish and game, that knows how to deal with livestock issues, knows how to deal with wildlife issues, knows how to deal with domesticated animals, has a lot of experience, owns a farm, uh, has livestock, so knows the proper care for you know horses and cattle and sheep and goats and all that other stuff and is also experienced with wildlife and, and knows how to deal, because she went to college for this, right? So she knows how to deal with these things. So we, we have, if you will, our own, for lack of a better term, our own fish and game officer, right, on the Wolfboro PD staff at no additional cost, folks. No additional <laughs> cost. Let me say that again. No additional cost, right? Or, and uh, so what, what did we do here? We got better outcomes. We got better outcomes. This was this was a better outcome scenario, and we we increased and enhanced our capability and our capacity at no additional cost with a better outcome, and we're really happy about that. And then, of course, she's hit the ground running. She's had to deal with already uh, domesticated uh, wildlife issues uh, or, or uh, livestock issues. Uh, she's had to deal with a, uh, a cat case where, where we had a, a situation of cat hoarding going on and the animals were rescued and turned over to Humane Society. So she's dealt with a number of issues already. She's hit the ground running. Uh, she knows what she's doing. Our performance has been nothing short of spectacular and we're expecting great and wonderful things. And again, this is just the Wolfboro Police Department task organizing, right, to meet the demands of the 21st century. So if a citizen had a concern about some type of animal abuse, that would be yes. this person again? That's, that's, yes, that's correct. And the reason being is, number one, she's, she's trained and educated. This is her field of study. She's a Bachelor of Science degree, four-year degree uh, in this. And two, she will be, she's not yet, but she will be a certified police officer. She will investigate this. Mm -hmm. And she will then be able to serve her own paperwork, do her own investigations, not tie up the patrol division uh, who, who have other things, not more important things, but have other things. And so, for example, listen, folks, 
Yeah, I'm the chief of police, but I grew up in Cambridge, Massachusetts, right? I, I don't know the ins and outs uh, and the nuances of a raccoon from a porcupine, but she does, okay? So I, I'm not an expert in wildlife management, but she is, okay? So she, she, she knows these things because she went to school for it. So it's, it's putting a, basically a square peg in a square hole. Good. No, that's it for me. That All sounds right. great. Thank you very much. Yeah. So again, Wolf Road Police Department, we're 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 trying to stay on the cutting edge, and 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 I'm I'm pulling this police department, oftentimes kicking and screaming into the 21st century. But we're gonna get <laughs> we're gonna get there, folks. Just bear with me. No, it's, I have a great staff, and and I I jokingly say that, but uh, the challenges meeting the challenges of the 21st century, uh, certainly in terms of not just Wolfboro but police science and how it's changing. It's a constant struggle, it's a constant battle. And we're always looking at cost-efficient ways to create efficiencies uh, so we don't have to add staff. But unfortunately, sometimes we do have to add staff. Uh, so uh, I know I spoke about it moments ago. I'm gonna speak about it again. Please support the uh, Warren article for the, for the additional school resource officer. That's, uh, that's much needed. Jim, thank you very much for being on the show. Folks, again, I will uh, bid you adieu and as always, stay safe out there, and I will see you next year. <music> Folks, welcome back to Coffee and Connections with the Chief. I'm Chief Dean Rondo, and it's time for your safety tip of the month. It's December. I can't believe it. It seemed like only yesterday was April. Uh, where, did the, where did the year go? Uh, so like everything else, uh, we have seasons to change, right? And the animals are moving around. They're bulking up for the winter. Uh, folks, leave them alone, all right? Uh, yep, you're going you're gonna to see some slow and lethargic animals moving around. They're, they're, they're cold, hungry, bulking up for the winter. Uh, that's okay, all right? Uh, they know what they're doing. Uh, and no, they're not rabid, okay? Uh, so, don't, so don't think that. Uh, if you see them, leave them alone. Uh, admire them for the, the magnificent uh, uh, creatures that they are, and uh, they will go about their business. Uh, come April, don't be, uh, don't be in such a rush to get your bird feeders out to start feeding all the little uh, chickadees, okay? Uh, because you'll attract bears, and you'll attract raccoons, and you'll get the squirrels out of, the, out of their nests sooner, all right? So uh, wait a few weeks, and then put your, your bird feeders out uh, because if you put them out too soon you're going to get your bears all right that bears are hungry they're they're waking up they're they've been you know two or three months in hibernation and and now they want to uh they now, now they want to the feed right because they've been burning up all that fat all winter long so that would be my safety tip of the of the month right uh no don't call the pd and say that you got a bear in your backyard it's going to wander away <clears throat> it's going to go find something else to eat if, if, if you have constant problem with bear, you know, look at what you're doing wrong, right? Are you, are you putting garbage out that, that's, that's uh, uncontained? Uh, are, do you have bird feeders out? Do you have suet out? Do you have, what, what are you doing to attract these animals? Remember, animals have a greater sense of smell uh, than humans do, all right? And they're hungry, all right? They're trying to survive. So you remove the food source, they're gonna go away. They'll, they'll find their own food source. So, you know, bears will go dig up some grubs somewhere under an old rotten log, and, and that's what you want. So look, look to yourself first, <clears throat> try to solve the problem. And if, if, if you do have an overly aggressive bear, then, then sure, call the PD and we'll figure out what we're gonna do to, to solve that problem. But uh, try to work through the problem uh, and, and execute some problem solving and remove the source of food. You got a compost pile, they're gonna go for the compost, all right? So yes, that will attract them. Uh, beyond that, folks, I want you to have a safe and wonderful uh, new year and a very Merry Christmas, and I will see you next year. <laughs>